Welcome. This is Chapter 2 of Introduction to a Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. The title of this chapter is The Propriety and Excellency of Devotion. They who discouraged the Israelites from going into the land of promise told them it was a country which devoured its inhabitants, or in other words, that it was impossible to withstand the pestilential infection of its air and further that the natives were such monsters that they devoured men like locusts. It is in this manner, my dear Philothea, that the world defames holy devotion, representing devout persons as a peevish, gloomy, and sullen race of men, that devotion begets melancholy and insupportable humors. But as Joshua and Caleb protested that the promised land was not only good and fair, But as Joshua and Caleb protested that the promised land was not only good and fair, but also that the possession of it would be sweet and agreeable, so the Holy Ghost, by the mouths of all the saints and our Savior, by his own, assure us that a devout life is a life of all others the most sweet, happy, and amiable. The world beholds devout people to fast, pray, suffer injuries, serve the sick, and give alms to the poor. It sees them watch over themselves, restrain their anger, stifle their passions, deprive themselves of sensual pleasures, and perform other actions in themselves painful and rigorous. But the world discerns not the inward cordial devotion which renders all these actions agreeable, sweet, and easy. Look at the bees. They found upon the thyme plant a very bitter juice, yet in sucking it they convert it into honey, because it is their propriety. O worldlings, devout souls, it is true find bitterness in their exercises of mortifications, but in performing them they convert them into the most delicious sweetness. The fires, flames, wheels, and swords seem flowers and perfumes to the martyrs, because they were devout. If then devotion can confer a sweetness on the most cruel torments, and even on death itself, why can it not do for virtuous actions? Sugar sweetens fruits and corrects whatever crudity or unwholesomeness may be in those that are ripe. Now devotions is that true spiritual sugar which corrects the bitterness of mortification by the sweetness of its consolation. It removes discontent from the poor, solicitude from the rich, sadness from the oppressed, insolence from the exalted, melancholy from the solitary, and dissipation from him that is in company. It serves as a well for fire in winter as for dew in summer. It knows as well how to use abundance as how to suffer want, and how to render honor and contempt equally profitable. In a word, it entertains pleasure and pain with equanimity and replenishes the soul with an admirable sweetness. Contemplate Jacob's ladder, for in it you have a true picture of a devout life. The two parallel sides between which we ascend and in which the rounds are fixed represent prayer which obtains the love of God and the sacraments which confer it. The rounds are the several degrees of charity by which we advance from virtue to virtue, either descending by action for the help and support of their neighbor, or ascending by contemplation to an amorous union with God. Now look attentively, I beseech you, upon those who are on the ladder. They are either men who have angelical hearts or angels clothed in human bodies. They are not young, although they seem so, because they are full of vigor and spiritual activity. They have wings to soar up to God by holy prayer, but they have also feet to walk with when men by a holy and edifying conversation. Their countenances are fair and cheerful because they receive all things with sweetness and content. Their legs, their arms, and heads are bare because in all their thoughts, affections, and actions, they will have no other design or motive that of pleasing God. The rest of their body has no other covering than a fair and light robe to show that although they make use of the world and worldly things, yet they use them in a most pure and moderate manner, 
not taking more of them than is necessary for their condition. Such are devout persons. Believe me, dear Philothea, devotion is the quintessence of pleasures, the queen of virtues, and the perfection of charity. If charity be the milk, devotion is the cream. If charity be a plant, devotion is its flower. If charity be a precious stone, devotion is its luster. If charity be a rich balm, devotion is its odor. Yes, the odor of sweetness, which comforts men and rejoices angels. And so concludes chapter 2 of Introduction to a Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales.